Hello everybody. In this video, we will talk about centric relation and centric occlusion. In the previous lecture, we discussed occlusal evaluation and now we will discuss that after we have evaluated the occlusion, how do we remove the high points or the interferences? There's a specific way to do that. We will discuss that in detail. Let's go ahead and proceed with the lecture. Let us begin from the very beginning. We will first try and understand our concepts on centric relation. Now, what is centric relation? Very simply putting, it is a relationship of a mandible to a maxilla. That means it is bone to bone relation and there is no involvement of teeth. Now, when does it occur? It occurs when there is proper alignment of the condyle disc assembly. Now, what is this alignment? The alignment is when your condyle is positioned in a manner that is it is superior most and anteriorly positioned against the posterior slope this is the posterior slope of what of the articular eminence so your condyle is positioned superiorly and anteriorly against the posterior slope of the articular eminence and in this position the condyle is in contact with the thin avascular portion of the articular disc. Also, this avascular portion is without nerves and it's a thin portion. Another thing is there that in this assembly, in this position, the condyles are aligned in such a manner that the compressive forces are directed in a manner that they are very well tolerated by the system. That means there is no sign of pain or discomfort. And where is all this happening? It's happening in the glenoid fossa. Now the proper definition, the centric relation is a maxillomandibular relationship independent of tooth contact in which the condyles articulate in the anterior superior position against the posterior slopes of the articular eminences. In this position, the mandible is restricted purely to rotary movement. From this unrestrained physiologic maxillomandibular relationship, the patient can make vertical, lateral or protrusive movements. And what is its significance? It is a clinically useful, repeatable reference position for evaluation and reconstruction of occlusion. It is also called ligamentous position or terminal hinge position. Now let us try and understand what is centric occlusion. Now this is the occlusion of teeth when the mandible closes in centric relation. This may or may not coincide with the maximum intercuspal position. In fact, it is seen that centric occlusion equals to centric relation in less than 10% of the cases. That means that when in centric relation, the mandible is made to close against the maxilla, it is called centric occlusion, but that may not coincide with the maximum intercuspal position. Now, what is maximum intercuspal position? It is a position in which the teeth are in full interdigitation with maximum number of teeth contacting each other. So, you cannot confuse centric occlusion and maximum intercuspal position. They may coincide or they may not coincide. Now, there is something known as slide in centric. What happens is the mandible is made to close in centric relation against the maxilla. Now sometimes it just does not form an intercuspal, maximum intercuspal position. Sometimes what happens is there is a slight initial occlusal contact and after that the mandible slides to a maximum intercuspal position. Now this slide is known as slide in centric. So how do we define it? It is the movement of a mandible while in centric relation from the initial occlusal contact to a maximum intercuspal position. Now we will do it in greater details in the following slides. In the previous lecture, we had discussed how to evaluate occlusion. Now after evaluating the occlusion, specific areas are selected that require occlusal adjustments for which interferences are checked. Now what is an interference? Interference can be described as undesirable occlusal contact that produce deviation of the mandible 
during its closure to maximum intercuspation. There are four types of occlusal interferences, centric, work non-working, working and protrusive. We will do one by one. Now evaluation and correction of centric relation interferences. We are going to follow Dawson. Now according to Dawson, first the centric relation interferences should be removed and then the eccentric. Now to do that, the mandible is closed in centric relation gently till there is initial tooth contact. If on increasing the force, the mandible gets deflected to a more closed position, then alterations must be made. Now how do we do it? We make the patient lie in supine position. We use both our hands. The thumbs are placed on the symphysis here and the fingers on the lower border of the mandible. These two fingers are placed on the lower border of the mandible and not sublingually. Now, now we ask the patient to relax her jaw and allow us to open her mouth. Gently open the mouth. Here you can see the thumbs are on the symphysis and the fingers on the lower border. So we gently open the mouth. Now slowly and gently we arc the mandible up and do it a few times. That means up and down, up and down. The purpose of this is to deactivate the muscles and to allow the condyles to go where they physiologically want to be. That is properly seated in the respective fossa. So you move the mandible up and down, up and down without closing the mandible. Now after doing up and down movements of the mandible, we slowly increase the upward component of the arc till a premature contact is reached. And when the patient feels that first initial contact, the patient is instructed to raise her finger. Now you repeat this process at least three times. That means you lift the mandible up till it touches the upper tooth. That means the first initial contact is made. At that point, the patient is asked to lift her finger and you repeat it three times. Now you ask the patient to point out where she feels her first contact. Then ask the patient to squeeze the teeth together. Now when she closes her teeth together, we will observe the direction to which the mandible deviates in a closed position. And that would be the maximum occlusal contact position. It will be noted and this deviation of the mandible to a more closed position is called slide in centric. Now with JSI assistant, use an articulating paper to mark the interfering contact. So we had moved the mandible up slowly till we got the first initial contact. Then we asked the patient to close the mouth tightly and we noted the deviation or slight slide in the mandible and that was called the slide in centric. Then we placed the articulating paper in the mouth and we noted that particular interfering contact and we marked it. Now the path of the rubbing inclines gets marked with the articulating paper and to remove these centric relation interferences, the sequence that we follow is we remove the mesial slope of the upper or the maxillary teeth and the distal slope of the lower or mandibular teeth and acronym used is MUDL. Now sufficient reductions are made in this manner to remove the slide or the interference that deflects the mandible. After we have removed that slide, we finally deepen the fossae to establish a more stable closure. Now at this now, at this juncture, when the maximum intercuspation occurs, that means when you ask the patient to close the mandible, there should not be any further movement of the mandible. Now you can see in this slide, the mesial dip, if this is the center, this is the mesial side, this is the distal side, and we noted the interfering contact. Here was the interfering contact. We noted this. Now, we reduce the mesial slope on the upper tooth, 
and in the lower arc if you come here the distal slope the distal slope is mark the distal slope of the lower tooth so you can remember mudl so for centric relation interferences this is the pattern that you follow now coming to non working side interferences so to remove that what you do is you ask the patient to move the mandible laterally to bring the canines in end to end contact on the working side now if there is a contact between the opposing premolar premolars or molars on the non working side then the interferences are present now in this case no such contact exists so there are no interference supposing contact existed say between these teeth supposing a contact existed how would we remove that to remove these interferences we will follow this rule of b u l l that means if this is the buccal cusp this is the lingual cusp we will grind the buccal incline of the upper lingual cusp that means this much and we would grind the lingual incline of the lower buccal cusp which is this one so this is the stamp cusp here we grind its buccal incline and the stamp cusp here we grind its lingual incline and we remember it by following the b u l l rule now coming to the working side interferences the mandible is shifted laterally to bring end to end contact of the canine on the working side now we check the working side are there any contacts present in this case we can see a contact is present here and there is a contact present here so these are the interferences on the working side and they have to be removed how do we do that the rule that we follow here is l u b l we grind the lingual inclines of the upper buccal cusp and the buccal incline of the lower lingual cusps the cusps are used for centric holding contact they have to be perfected so grinding is done on the sides of the cusp or the walls and not the tips so you followed that l u b l rule for the working side interferences coming to the evaluation and correction of protrusive interferences we ask the patient to bring the mandible forward in edge to edge contact like this now in this situation there should be a symmetrical contact of at least two or more incisors with their antagonists like it is achieved here also all the posteriors should be disseccluded now in this case you can see there is a contact between this premolar here it is not disseccluded whereas this is disseccluded so this contact is an interference and it needs to be removed now what should not be there when we bring the mandible forward in protrusion the path should be a straight protrusive path without any disturbing contact in case there is a deviation that means a disturbing contact exists also if there is a contact between premolars and molars then they should be relieved we observed in the previous slide there was a contact present between the premolars and we have to relieve that now how do we do it now let us consider this is the midline so this is the mesial portion and this is the distal aspect so what do we do we selectively grind the distal incline of the upper here and then we check after we've grinded the distal incline of the upper has the contact been relieved if not so then we grind the mesial incline of the lower like this here and then we check again have we relieved the contact and in most cases the contact gets relieved so the rule is duml grind the distal incline of the upper or mesial incline of the lower now we have removed the centric relation interferences the working side the non working side and the protrusive interferences now so we can conclude that mouth like any other organ in the body is a self sufficient unit a protective relationship exists between the posterior and the anterior teeth 
which should be respected and not violated while performing the restorative procedure. When we place a restoration in the mouth, it should not lead to generation of any abnormal forces or creation of lateral stresses. In fact, it should be so well integrated that the feeling of artificial replacement just does not occur. So I, I hope you've got it, that as a restorative dentist, this is what you need to know. You need to create restorations in the mouth that are complete harmony with your oral cavity. All the data in this video has been taken from the chapter of occlusion from the textbook of operative dentistry. You can click on this link and you can buy it so that you can have a better insight to this chapter. In case you like this video, do subscribe to this channel. And in case you have any doubt, you can put it in the comment section and I'll try and solve it.